Hello, my name is Pablo. I'm the creator of Dashman and I'm here with my friend Daniel. And today we're going to do a video in which we go through the process of installing a dashboard. We're here in my kitchen and we're going to install a dashboard in my kitchen. You might want to do it in your office or something like that. Yep. We're going to take the approach of let's do it cheaply with what we have. So shall we go through what I have? Let's just go through what I have. Okay. So let's start with this one. So All here right. I have a, a monitor. Samsung. It's a Good. cheap Samsung monitor. It's a bit dusty. So we could use this one for the dashboard. Uh, what do you think? It's, uh, well, it doesn't have HDMI, but that may be fine, depending on what you're going to plug into it. But I'm a bit concerned about the lack of holes. Holes? What holes? The holes for the screws, so you know the thing. In the okay, back. so if we look at the back of this monitor, it's very pretty, but as Anya says, it doesn't have any holes. Let's compare it to another one that may have holes. Can you pick that one up? Yeah. So that's an LG, um, a bit more dusty. As I said, we're working with what I have, we just went through my house and picked everything up. So you're talking about those holes? Holes. Yes. Um, that's the this amount. So normally when you get one of the consumer monitors, they come with a stand, which you probably don't want for your dashboard. So this stands for video something, and it's an yes. organization that, <laughs> that makes a lot of standards um, regarding video, and one of those is the this amount, which is how much to separate the holes in a screen so that you can mount it. Also, the existence of holes to begin with is part of it. Um, should we show the bracket? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So basically, this is what you're going to use to mount it to the wall. This is the only thing that I bought for, for, this, for this video. It was about $20. It's one of the cheapest. You can buy... Nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, there are more expensive ones. Yeah. But... Um, generally, the more expensive ones have like they are more stable, they are more robust, um, they have more uh, kind of movement that you can do like tilting and so on, um, and how much weight it can support. So this one cannot support a lot of weight. So for example, I would never put this one on that. Yeah, let's not do that. Also holes. Because yes, also holes. Let's go through this one. This is an amazing screen and a crappy monitor. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good point. Yeah. So, so the screen in this, in, this, in this monitor, the actual panel, it's amazing. It's one of the best that you can buy in the market, or at least it used to be. Um, it has no holes, but there's a way to remove this thing and replace it with, a, with another one. Like, okay. actual Apple sells you a kit which comes with a, with a particular tool that you insert and remove the thing and you put a, a, what could possibly go wrong? a, a base amount yeah. here. Cool. The problem is that this monitor, I think it's like 18 kilograms, just the monitor. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> so cool. there's not many monitor arms and, and there's a few walls that would be able to, <laughs> to have this on. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, that's that's a real wall. Yeah, uh, yeah. So so I'm not going to mount this. Here is where, where you see the, the best amount. So you have two different sizes, mostly depending on what weight the monitor is. But you're gonna have like the big distance or the small one. And like the the LG monitors we showed before, this one, you basically just hook that in there and put the screws on. And, and well, what do you do with this one? Oh, no, why? It, it doesn't have holes. You do, it doesn't. Okay. Well, it has holes now. Right. Now that we've dealt with that. As I was saying, these are the holes where you basically need to put the connector, the best, best amount in there, and then put the screws in, which is why that one wouldn't work, no holes. 
This one also has the holes for the VESA mount. Yeah, so, so, so this one could work as well. This one doesn't. Yeah. Um, if you only have a monitor with no VESA mount, there are actually mounts to work with that, which are essentially like big clamps that right. grab the monitor like this. I would recommend avoiding them. It's their hassle and these days most monitors do have this amount. Yeah, if you are buying a new monitor for this, basically check that it has the mount. We also need a computer yep. to drive the dashboard. Yep. In the spirit of working with what you have, I went around the house and I picked up every computer and laptop that I could find. Cool. So this is what I have. Alright. So I like this little one. Yes, this is a very old netbook from when netbooks were like the cool thing. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, yeah those and fun. it's it's from when I was working at my previous startup, Watu. Um, it's running Windows 7. Windows 10, Windows 10 doesn't run on that one. Of course not. Uh, then I have my Windows 10, Windows 10 laptop, yep. and I have my Mac lab. Yep. Uh, these two I'm sort of using, that one I'm not using. Well, let's so have, let's start with this. So what would you what would you need to check in that one? Well, first thing, will it be powerful enough? Well, we're just going to be rendering a few websites, so it should be, right? Yeah. Uh, does it have the right output? So, it has HDMI, which is pretty much all we need. It also has VGA. So, yeah. we have multiple options. That, that monitor should have both. Yeah, both so monitors have both, actually. fine. It's very lightweight uh, and very small, which means you can just hide it behind the monitor instead of just Absolutely. having a cable hanging down. Uh, so, I like this. Yeah. I think we should try with that one. We have the monitor, the mounting bracket, the computers. Good, yep. Now we need tools. Yes. The most important tool that you're going to need is the drill. So, you're already familiar with this one. Yep. This is a smaller one. So, this one has a feature that would be very useful for, for us right now. But, truth be told, you can probably do it with something like this as well. It really depends on what type of wall you're using. So if you're using plaster wall, for example, you can drill it with anything. But if you have a hard concrete wall, you will want the hammer function that something like this will give you. Now, I think here's when we, we have the disclaimer that walls in different parts of the wall are different. Yes. We're going to drill in walls that are made out of bricks. That yes. are pretty solid. In this country, in the UK, normally they use bricks. And you just drill anywhere on the brick and you can install something. In the US, for example, they use a lot of these thin plaster. Yep. You, you, plaster have to, ball, yeah. you have to find the, the beams. Yeah. Yes, the beams under there. I don't know how. Wait, what are these? Ah, there you go. So you have to find it. Uh, for that, I recommend that you check out. This is a bit overkill. You can just knock, and you'll find them basically. Okay. Um, but these are useful to make sure there's no electrical wiring and things like that going through, so you will not die. So here we are, where we are going to install the bracket to mount the monitor. So this is a corner of my kitchen. I want the monitoring like, like here, looking down a little bit from the corner, so it can be seen from a lot of the kitchen very easily. So the bracket is going to be something like this. So these swivels. So the first the first thing to do is to mark where we're going to make the holes. Well, there we have the, the marks. And the next step is drilling. Now, a uh, short word about drilling. You need to use the right type of bit. So first of all, you need to know what size of bit. So the wall plug that comes with the bracket itself says over there the size of the bit, which is eight. So we use an eight millimeter bit. One important detail is you want to use, particularly if you're drilling into actual walls and not into plaster wall, you want to use wall drill bits. So if you see the head of that, it's different from a, say, wood bit. You see the little protrusion there. You want this bit to basically survive the impact of the hammer action. If you use a wood bit, it will die. Um, once you pick the right bit, the other thing to do is to mark how deep you want to drill. So basically, if you just put the plug next to it, one easy way is to just have electrical tape or some other type of tape. So, we pick the plug and just mark around there. You want to make it a bit deeper than, than the length of the plug. And with that, all set. 
The other important bit is you want to make sure, let's try this camera here, you want to make sure that the hammer action is activated, so you want to have the drill bit, the drill set to that function and not the normal chest bit, which would be for wood or, or steel or something like that. All yours. It is a powerful drill. It's a fun one. So I'll need your help to know that it's perpendicular to the wall. Pull it back a little bit. Now that this is done, we're going to mount the monitor here. So Daniel, I want you to put the monitor in front and I'm going to be free. So we are like the vessel holes. First one is in. Put the diagonal. Roll them all in. Yep. Cool. There it goes. You just need to tighten the silver thing. So now that we have the monitor set up, uh, we plugged it in, we're going to set up the computer. We're going to use HDMI, which is normally what I recommend unless you're going for high-end video. Yep. Then DisplayPort is really nice. Uh, let's see yeah, go ahead and start it. Have you not turned this on in four years? Uh, well, I just started like a couple of days ago. Really? Because I knew it was going to have a lot of updates. And it's working. Oh, it's working. My super secret password. Is it still monkey? Yep. Good. Monkey123. Ah, okay, good. You cheat, uh, Yeah, you click that. The resolution is weird. Oh, it does have a mirror. On Windows, you can do. The win, key, the win key and P, so win P, well, and it opens this, yeah, where you can on, yeah. choose, uh, oh, it, it cannot do, okay, so there it's doing projector only, which is actually just the, the outside output, so now it's, it's having full on resolution. So now, what a lot of people do is click Chrome, and put on the website that they want to display. But it would be really nice if there's some sort of software that can do better than that, right? If only we had something. Yeah. But, such is life. Ha <laughs> ha